Notion is about to change forever. At 2025's Make with Notion, they just launched Notion 3.0, which includes Notion agents, permission rules, a new map view, new badges and certificates, as well as new AI connectors. So in this video, I want to show you what all of that is and how to use it. I will start with the agents, then the permissions, the new map view, the new badges and certificates, and last but not least, the new AI connectors. For those who don't know me, my name is Leon and I've spent a lot of time in Notion and here is a compromised version of Make with Notion 2025. By the way, if you don't want to miss videos like this, subscribe to the channel and leave a like. In this chapter, I want to introduce you to Notion agents. Notion agents are agents that live inside of your Notion, so they have everything in your workspace as context. And the good thing is, they can do work for you. Notion says that if you prompt the AI, they can handle up to 20 minutes of multi-step actions. The Notion agents are also able to search the internet and you can choose between two models, Claude Sonnet 4 or ChatGPT 5. Or you can go in auto mode and Notion decides for you. In a second, I will also give you an example of what is possible and what are the limitations of Notion agents. Notion agents are currently only available on two paid plans. The plans are the business plan or the enterprise plan. If you are on one of those plans, you can go to the bottom here and open it here. Or in the sidebar, there is also an area that says AI where you can access them. Now let's configure our Notion agent. Let's go in here and here you can click on personalize. I already did that because I'm currently recording this video for the second time because something was malfunctioning. But what you can do, I already did that, is you can go in here and give it a name and select an accessory. But the most important part is here, if you click on Edit Instructions. Here you can see I have my instructions. You will be greeted with a whole different view. You have these three headings and then you can customize this. For the identity, I went for you are a Notion expert with years of experience and you know everything about Notion because currently we only have one agent in our workspace. And here I want a general list rather than a specialist. Then this is something they also showed in their demo. I think they did it there with my queen. In this case, I used always greet me with my lord. Then we have chat interactions. There I said, oh, please always keep your answers as short as possible. So I don't want any fluff in there, but leave nothing important out just for making it shorter. So I said, if there is something important in it, and it's a bit longer, so it be, because I want everything important in it. Then I also said before making changes to a page and database entry, always preview your suggestions and ask for my approval first. So this and this, I will only like briefly mention it at the moment because this will be important in a second. But now let's go for the sentence in memories. I said never set a due date to a past date, always to the same date as the due date or further in the future. This applies for tasks, for example, where I have a date that where I want to do something and a date where something is due. And here I set some guardrails where I say when you create this, always make sure this has to be on the same date or past. Another thing I want to add here is always is always assign me for the assignee. So if there is a person property, I want to be assigned. This is also something that will be important in a second. And yes, this is a very simple instructions page. You can make this even more complicated and even longer. But for the sake of this video, I want to keep it short. You can also build stuff like uh, different scenarios. So here you have, if this happens, then do that. If this happens, then do that. You can build this out in here. You can also do, and this is something I want to do in a second, mention specific databases for the AI to make sure things get added to the right database. What you can also do in here is here in the prompt, so not in the instructions, you can mention a person, a page, 
or a date. You can also link or mention a database, which is a uh, page here to make sure it has the right context. And what you can do on top for context is you can attach files, for example, a screenshot. The last thing is in here in all sources. And this is something I actually want to talk with you about in the last chapter. Now there are things that agents can't do or can't use at the moment. I will now show you a list of what is not possible at the moment. You can read through this or even take a screenshot. At the moment, the Notion agents can't access settings such as billing or security, for example. They can't change permissions. They can't use automations or integrations. They can't use database templates, comments. When it comes down to properties, formulas, roll-ups, buttons, location, ID and verifications are not available. They can also not use forms, database layouts, notifications and linked views of databases. So it's a pretty long list. So just make sure that you know that this is something that is out of scope for the agents, at least at the moment. But I think we will see a lot of these features working with agents in the future because this is just the launch of the agent feature. If I didn't mention anything that is not possible at the moment, let me know in the comments. Maybe I missed something that currently is not possible with agents. The last thing that is not possible with agents at the moment is you can't configure an agent. Let's say, for example, you are in a team environment and then configure this and all of your team members can use it. Every member has to or every user has to configure this on their own. What you can do is you can share your instructions with your team so they can copy paste it, but you can't do it for your team by setting it up in your workspace. Now let's test this. What I want the AI to build is let's go into home here. I have a tasks database as well as a projects database and I want the AI to build this for me. Now let's get over here and let me copy the prompt. Now here is the prompt for the AI. You can pause this video now and read through this. But for now, I want to send this off. Now you can see everything got prepared. We have a database one with tasks and a database two with projects. And as I said in the instructions, I want the AI to ask me if it should proceed. And now I can say yes, and it will create everything. So now you can see the AI is finished and everything is done. Let's go in here. First, let's change the order. And in tasks, we have tasks, due date, priority, status, and a relation. The only thing that I forgot is to add an assignee. I will now prompt the AI to add a assignee property. Now I said, please add a person property to the task database called assignee. Now it asked me to proceed. I say yes. And now you can see we have an assignee property. Let's also go into projects. And here you can see we have the name, the date, the status and a relation. So everything is perfect. Now we have the skeletons. Now let's add data to this. Now, before we add data, one small thing is I want to add this prompt and I want it to update our memory to these databases because there were these phrases where I said tasks should go into this database and projects into this. And you don't have to go in here and customize it and add it. You can prompt it to update it and it will add this to the memories. So let's send this off and you can see it updated it. When I say yes, it will do it. So now you can see everything got updated. You can also, for example, if you say the answers are too long or too uncasual, you can just write from now on, give me more precise answers or more casual answers and Notion will automatically update this. Now let's add two tasks to this project and a project. Now I prepared this prompt and you can pause this video and read through it. But now I want to send this off. Now you can see it prepared everything and I can say, yes, I want to do this. By the way, 
you can see here this undo section. I ask the AI to always ask me before proceeding. If you don't have this in your prompt, it is not a problem. You can always undo this. So if this is not what I wanted to do, I can say undo and I will be left at this stage and I can start from scratch. But because I said I want to ask it before doing something, I can now say yes. So now let's go in here and take a look. We have built the desk, paint the wall, due dates are correct, priority, status, assignee, the project. And let's go into the project and we have the project, the date, range, the status and the task. So everything is correct. Now, this was a very simple example and this was on purpose because I don't want to make things too complicated. But I would really like to know your use cases. So tell me them in the comments down below. Or if you have any suggestions on what to make better or what to change, I'm really curious to hear your opinion on this. But now let's move on to the next chapter. In this chapter, I want to show you page level access. This is what Notion calls it. To access it, what you need is you need at least one person property. This can be a person property or this created by property, for example, but the value needs to be a person. Then the second thing, you can only access it in the full page database. So in a linked view, you can't do this. You have to go into the database itself and under share at the bottom, you can find it. So as you can see, page level access is only available based on a person property. Now here I said, for example, only I have access to this database, no one else. But, and this will be important in a second, we will build a freelancer dashboard. I said, if someone is the assignee, they can see this entry and they can edit it. Now here I created a rule that says anyone in assignee can edit the page they are assigned to. And here you have different options for a normal person property. You have the options can edit, can comment and can view. For a, for example, created by property, you have full access, can edit, can comment and can view. By the way, if you have a conflict of permissions, let's say, for example, at the top, you have another person that has full access and down here you have anyone in assignee can only view. Notion will always give them the highest permission. So if you say first one person has full access and down here only can view, this person still has full access. Now, what I want to build is because here I have my second account invited. And you can see here when you have a rule based on a property, this property will get this key. And here you can see I assigned me to the to the task build the desk. Let's quickly switch over to my second account. Now, what you can see on my second account is here. I can only see the task I am assigned to. Let's switch back to my other account. Here I can see both. And that's because on the database I showed you only I have access, no one else. But I had the rule that if a person is assigned to this, they can see their entries. And this is what happened here. I invite my second account and it can edited. So on the database level, only I have access on this page for this link view, they can edit it and they will only see because I have a rule in my database where they can edit where they are assigned to. So let's switch over to my second account. And this is the case. So to set this up, what we need to do is we need to go to our database and here make sure that only we have access here. I quickly renamed them so I can separate them from the other tasks and project databases on the left side. So now here I created a linked view of this database. So on the database, we made sure that only we have access here. We need to invite 
the freelancer or in this case I will invite my second account. So here you can see now I invited my second account and when we switch over because I am assigned uh, on this account to both tasks you will see I have no access. What we first need to do is we need to go into home and there under share we need to create a new rule which says that for the assignee when someone is assigned they can edit it. This will create this key up here and we can go back to our freelance tasks dashboard. Here we can now for example build the desk, select our second account or the freelancer in this case and if we now switch over to the second account you will see that one task will appear and this is the case. So that's it for this chapter let's move on to the next chapter. In this chapter I want to tell you about the new map view. Unfortunately it's not available on my account at the moment but I want to tell you what it's like so that you are informed. Let's take my CRM that the Notion AI agent created for me. All of this is made up by Notion AI. So in order to access the map view you need to add, and this will show up here then, there is a new location property. You need to add a location property where you can put in an address and then you can go up here and you will also have a map view and then you can select this map view and every entry will be displayed as a point on this map where the location is. So this could be very beneficial for example to a CRM to see where your people are or, or where the companies are or you can use this for a trip planner where the different sightseeing you want to visit are or something else. But what you need to take from this chapter is that there is a new location property where you can put in an address and then you can add a new map view where you can see your entries as points on a map. And that's it for this chapter. Let's move on to the next chapter. In this chapter, I want to show you the new badges and certifications. So you need to first go to the Notion Academy site and here you have everything around the new badges and certification. Notion already had badges in the past. I think it was October 2024 where they closed the program. There was also an essentials badge, for example. And now after roughly 11 months, they reopened the Notion Academy in, in order to get badges and certificates. So in total, let's go to earn credentials. You have three badges essentials, workflows and advanced. These are free and you have a certification for admin and this is paid. So you have to pay a hundred dollar in order to get this certification. So the workflow is same. Let's go for example to essentials. You have videos you need to watch and then you can take a quiz and when you pass the quiz you get the Match. So here you can choose essentials, workflows, advanced and the admin path. And that's it for this chapter. Let's move on to the next chapter. In this chapter, I want to talk about the new AI connectors. If you go down here, you can click on all sources. This is the thing I talked about in the first chapter that we will cover briefly now. So what you can do is you can do a so-called enterprise search. So you give Notion everything it should search in, for example, the web and then my whole workspace and you can connect apps. We already had GitHub, Gmail, Google Drive, Linear and Slack. And now we get five new ones. We get Jira, Outlook, SharePoint, Microsoft Teams and Notion Mail. So from now on, you can use these new five ones in beta. One thing Notion also mentioned at their keynote is offline mode. And if you want to learn more about this, watch this video over here. Stay consistent.